All right, today we looked at animations of superpositions of our basic uh, irrotational flows. And I want to use today's uh, review lecture here to talk about two specific cases. Uh, first of all, uniform flow plus a source. And then we'll also do uniform flow plus a doublet. And I'm not going to do the mathematics of it here. It would be a bit of a mess. All I want to point out um, is descriptively that near the origin the source is very strong um, and then far away from the origin on both sides the source is weak and so uniform flow dominates uh, both uh, to the left, the right, and up and down. Um, now if we follow a streamline right along the axis, along the x-axis here, at some point along that axis the flow from the source exactly counteracts the flow from the uniform flow, and that creates a stagnation point. Stagnation points are defined by both components of velocity being zero, so ur equals u theta equals zero. Stagnation points are interesting because they define a particular feature in the flow. We know that this stagnation point is convergent in the x direction, which means it has to be divergent in the y direction by mass conservation. If we follow that streamline as a contour of the, of the uh, stream function, that streamline will head off towards uh, x going to plus infinity uh, with a pattern like this. Now if I sketch in the streamlines inside the, uh, the dividing streamline, the red line, um, they, they look like this source that becomes uniform flow. The streamlines along the outer edge split and move around that streamline. And so we usually think of this flow here as the internal flow, the other as the external flow, and this represents flow encountering a bluff body. In the case of uniform flow plus a doublet, we actually have two stagnation points because of the symmetry of the doublet. So near the origin we have this crazy figure eight pattern that is uh, directed in the negative x direction, both uh, to, the, to the left of the origin and to the right. So if we have uniform flow approaching from left to right, as we get far away from the um, origin, the, it, the flow becomes uniform. But again, we're going to have a stagnation point at some point along the x-axis here where the flow from the two components exactly balance. And we will also have a stagnation point, in this case, on the other side, where now the flow is balanced but is a divergent flow. Flow is going away from that point. If we have a convergence in x, we have to have a divergence in y. If we have a divergence in x, we have to have a convergence in y. It turns out that mathematically we can show that there's a streamline that is a circle. And that circle um, has streamlines that follow from left to right going from one stagnation point to the other stagnation point. Inside that circle, flow looks like a doublet. That's our internal flow and usually is not of particular physical interest. Outside, we have the streamline that terminates at the stagnation point, but then the adjoining streamlines split and go around in a symmetric way. I didn't draw that very symmetric. The circle. And so what this represents is a cylinder in cross flow uh, where there's a, a symmetry between the leading and trailing edges. Now this is irrotational flow, which means no boundary layers, no friction. When there's friction, the flow changes, and that's when uh, wakes appear, and that's when drag forces appear. But for now we have this very symmetric flow representing ideal flow around a cylinder. 